Good evening and uh, welcome to the very first Up The Dale podcast. My name is Neil Harvey, I'm chairman of Walton Dale Cricket Club and second 11 captain. Joining me tonight is Dave Maguire, my vice chairman and also a player at the club. And uh, yeah, we decided to have a discussion over the winter about doing a, a either a podcast or a video podcast about things going in, on in and around Walton Dale, uh, whether that be uh, matches, either previous matches or upcoming matches, um, information that's going on in, in and around the club, uh, and also information in general cricket, whether that be issues around the Palace Shield, uh, local cricket around the North West, or even international cricket. So we decided that we'd get our heads together, and particularly at this time when there's not a lot going on at the moment, and, uh, and create this podcast uh, just to discuss some matters. Um, uh, anything else, Dave, you'd like to add on that? Not really, just to just to say we, we felt that it was a good chance to sort of get some information out there about the things that are going on within our club and then also just to perhaps provide people with a flavour of um, what it's like uh, running a local sports club and the life and times of, of an amateur cricket club during the summer where we hope to be out there playing cricket at some point. Uh, on that point, talking about an amateur sports club as our, as we are ourselves, um, one of the things we wanted to discuss was what happens with Walton Dale over from the end of last season up to where we are now. Uh, lots have gone on. Uh, end of last season, uh, first team got relegated from Division 2 of the Palace Shield to Division 3. The second team uh, just missed out on promotion from Division 4. Uh, obviously, because of the relegation as well, that wouldn't have happened because we couldn't go up into Division 3 because that's where the first team were coming down into. Um, and then we had our Sunday team, which provided the development for junior players. Um, and then at the end of last season, uh, the club made the decision to uh, swap the Sunday team and allow that to become a Saturday, to third Saturday team. Um, the reasons for that were primarily because we felt that the Sunday league had progressed to a stage where it wasn't offering the development opportunities for some of our younger players that potentially it could with the level of ability uh, the Sunday League had progressed to. Um, so on that basis, we made the decision to go to three Saturday teams. And, and, and realistically, Dave, that gave the winter a whole new slant uh, coming out of the back end of last season. And what's your thoughts on, on uh, you know, from, from the end of the season coming into winter nets, how, how the club had progressed? I think um, there's certainly been a uh, renewed sense of optimism at the club. There seems to have been quite a, uh, a, a feeling of wanting to draw a line under um, the previous season and the disappointment of relegation. Uh, I got the feeling of um, positivity and encouragement from the first team players during uh, winter nets. We've also see, we've seen good attendance and, and high levels of quality training during the sessions that we had. So I think I think the first team are, are um, definitely in a good place to challenge for promotion um, once the season gets underway. Um, perhaps a, a season at a, in a lower division gives uh, the opportunity to build some confidence, win some matches. And uh, as I said, I think they're in, uh, in a good position to challenge for promotion. Uh, at the end of the season. If I move on to the second team, obviously they just narrowly missed out on promotion uh, last season. I think again, with a couple of new recruits coming through the door, I think they're in a good position to challenge for promotion themselves. And you mentioned the new third team. Um, it's been something of a bit of a brave decision by the club, I think. Um, it is certainly going against the trend of what we have been seeing in local league cricket with teams being more likely to be cutting the number of teams they put out on a weekly basis rather than adding to them. Um, but I think it does present a real opportunity for the club's young players in particular to get regular competitive cricket against people of a similar standard to, uh, as they are. Um, we see a lot of other teams uh, in Division 6 using it as an opportunity to develop their junior players. And I think I think certainly uh, Walton Dale joining um, that thinking and in, in introducing this third team, I think is a real opportunity for the future of the club to 
build skills and experience in our junior players, which can only help in future seasons to come. I completely agree with you from that point of view. And I think one of the things that we've got to think about and that we've discussed within the club is uh, having three teams will allow a lot more fluidity of movement of players, uh, like you say, opportunity. Uh, if younger players do well in that third team or even the second team, the ability for them to move through the teams uh, and the ability that they will have in terms of uh, showing that ability at a, a different level. So from that point of view, I think that's a really good thing for us to focus on uh, and hopefully will give us the ability to move on and move that forward with the club in general. So the new recruits that we've got over the winter, um, in terms of the ability mix that we've got, is it, there's been a, a good mix of ability across that can fit in with all the three teams that we've got. Um, if I just try uh, just touch on uh, one or two of them, obviously we we had Elliot Tailforth come from Longridge to us. Who Elliot was known to us. Uh, he'd uh, played on loan with us in the second team or with yourself. I didn't play that day, but I did meet him on the day. Uh, and Elliot fits in really well with the Watlerdale ethos, even to the extent that he's going to come in as second team vice captain to myself. Um, and I think Elliot will fit in really nicely and. and, and at Winter Nets, he's been helping out and, and, and speaking to some of the younger players and helping them out. Uh, I think Elliot will be a really good addition for us. Yeah, I completely agree, Neil. It's that sort of clubman ethos that you are looking for uh, as an amateur cricket club, looking for somebody to get involved, not only on Saturday playing in the matches, but then also being involved in helping other players, junior players, and the general running of the club. That's, that's exactly the kind of attitude and spirit that that you look for and I, I, I'd agree with you I think he'll be a great fit uh, and an asset to the club uh, for the season. Uh, one of the other things that happened which was obviously quite quite unique well not unique but quite good off the back of Elliot coming he also brought Imran Hussain with him who we've quickly worked out over the winter nets is a very high quality batsman uh, and someone we think will be certainly from a quality perspective and an ability perspective a, a huge asset to the club so uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing Imran bat uh, another person who joined the club who I'm quite intrigued to see how he gets on, uh, hopefully when we do get out on the pitch, is, is Abdullah Kadba, who's came from, come from Whittle. Um, seems to be a really competent all-rounder, a real uh, interesting spin bowler and a guy who clearly likes to hit the ball a long way. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, uh, I can see Ab Abdullah fitting in, you know, again, across any of the three teams, but I can see him be actually being an asset in either one of them. Um, and hopefully it'll be higher up the uh, higher up the teams, maybe even first or second team. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Abdullah gets on. Yeah, he certainly hits the ball a long way, as my bowling will attest to. Um, I think he's hit me through the through the nets more on more than one occasion over the course of the winter. But I would agree, he's a very versatile player. Um, I think we're lucky to have him at the club. Um, you talk about the quality of recruits coming in over the winter. I think it could be really useful in any of the teams, as you say, that we put out. You can certainly uh, contribute with both bat and ball. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing him uh, out on the field and his performances over the season. Just to finish off, what touching on the new recruits, we've also had uh, Evan and Robin Benyon, uh, who are junior members at Leyland, but like my kids are, are wanting to play their senior cricket at Walney Dale. So they're going to be really good additions in the third team and they'll get lots of opportunities down there. Uh, Evan played one game in the seconds with us, filling in last year on, on loan and, and did extremely well. Um, and I, I think both of those two will get good opportunity in the third team and, and hopefully might progress further as well. So uh, it'll be good for those guys to see those guys come in. Um, just on this section and just, just sort of wrapping it up a little bit, I know you've covered it a little bit in terms of hopes for the three teams. Um, but obviously, we don't know if we're going to get back out on the field this summer or not. But I think moving forward, um, our hopes as a club for the three teams are that the first team want to progress. And we, we were looking, another thing we haven't touched on uh, is an overseas amateur. We were looking at getting an overseas amateur this season. Obviously, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, but that's something as a club that we want to progress into. We think that will help develop the club as well. Um, so from my perspective, I think there's, there's lots, of, as you touched on, there's lots of positivity. The first team now under the captaincy of Scott Newton um, have a, a really good outlook uh, and, and in terms of potential for promotion back up to Division 2, which will obviously give the ability then for the second and third team 
to try and uh, progress themselves up the league um, behind the first team. And I think that's something as, as a club that we're all aiming for. Yeah, obviously we don't know in what shape and what format any season this summer will will look like. Yeah. Um, but I think certainly at the start of the of the year, I, I don't think there was any um, any thought that any of the three teams couldn't have a good season and be certainly up there challenging for one of the top two spots. I think that was in you know the the ability of all three sides to do that and. If we manage to play half a season, for example, I don't see that situation changing. Agreed, agreed. Uh, so we're just going to quickly move on to um, something that we've been doing a lot of over the last few weeks. And given the lack of cricket that's been going on, um, we've been doing a few virtual matches um, using the old how's that method, but also trying to update it a little bit. And we've been doing some play cricket live scorer um, and, and, and trying to keep some interest in cricket going. Um, we played some friendly matches against local teams um, and we've also expanded that out and done some teams further afield, including two big YouTube teams in Three Bridges and Sandersted uh, and also uh, a local neighbour of Sandersted, Pearly Cricket Club and also somebody a little bit closer, um, Trimple Cricket Club of Lancaster. Off the back of that, we decided that if the start of the season was going to be delayed, why not continue, continue that on? and play some matches as they would have been played out if the season was carrying on. So the first of those, and what we decided was we would start with the first team for the first weekend. The second weekend, we'd move to the second team. Third weekend, we'd move to the third team and then rotate round back to the first team again. So the first weekend, uh, the first team would have been travelling to Blackpool Thirds at Mossam Lane. Um, so that's going to be our first match. The second weekend, the seconds would have been away at Tarleton so that will hopefully if we can contact Tarleton that will be the second match and the third team uh, if I can remember rightly I'll check on that I can't remember who the third team were playing the third week um, but they will be that will be the third match we'll play but yeah the first game first game the first team would have been traveling to Blackpool to Mossam Lane it's um it's been a happy hunting ground for the first team in the past I distinctly remember a match when I was injured that I went to watch where a certain Curtis Morris got nine foot and uh, the same day uh, Mr Alex Hines I think got 70 odd something like that and a, a convincing victory I think that might have been the last time actually the, the first played at Mossam Lane um, yep. we got in contact with Blackpool and their captain Alex Diver um, and he was more than happy to do this um, and we'll be putting it out on social media um, so yeah so we'll be doing the format I'm going to try and do a, a, a at least a 40 over or maybe 45 over match for those of you who might have seen the matches that we've been doing, they've, they've been T20 matches. They've not generally been lasting the 20 overs, which, to be honest, Dave, that's pretty much like a Wantley Dale innings anyway. It is very true to life. It is, it is. So, just in terms of this match, um, Alex Diver sent us over a Blackpool team. A um, few of the guys are known to us. Um, some of them are not. Uh, I'm just going to pull the team up now. Um, and see if I can pull the team. So the Blackpool team was, um, and excuse the pronunciation if some of these are wrong, uh, one was Sharma, uh, two Mortimer, three Ahmed, four Sainsbury, five Campbell, six Lloyd, wicketkeeper, uh, seven Stanley Howard, somebody who's known to me, my son plays against him quite a lot, uh, eight Samra, nine Mr Diver as captain, ten Munir and eleven Connor Griffin. Um, so that's the Blackpool team that's been selected to play us. Um, just touching on some of these guys, I, I, I don't know if you know anything about them, Dave. Uh, I know Ben Mortimer has played against us a lot before, as as Alex, obviously. As I mentioned, Stan Howarth, I know he's played against my son a lot in junior cricket. Very useful all-rounder for his age. Uh, and Connor Griffin, I do remember playing in that match um, the last time we were at Mossum Lane. And, uh, and was a useful scene ball, if I remember correctly. Um, so from that point of view, as I say, it's a, a team we've not played for a while. I'm sure some of those guys um, haven't, uh, as somebody we haven't faced. But uh, what's your thoughts on uh, on playing Blackpool for the first match back, Dave? Yeah, I must admit, it's been quite a few years since I've played Blackpool as well. But I think one of the things you always find is they always have 
uh, quite a lot of strength in depth. They're generally all very well drilled and well skilled cricketers uh, with bat and ball. Um, and people like, as you say, Captain Alex Diver have been um, around the Palace Shield for quite a few years now and knows knows the game inside out. So I think it will be a really tough game for us uh, to start the season with. Um, and it will certainly be a good test of, we were talking about earlier about promotion credentials and things like that. It'll be uh, very interesting to see how it goes with our uh, with our new first first team skipper and indeed and first 11. Well, touching on, on, on our first 11, I'll give you the team that Captain Scott Newton and Vice-Captain Harry Bates have decided for, for this match at Mossham Lane against Blackpool Thirds. Um, I believe this might, I was going to say this might be batting order, but I don't think it is. So it's uh, Mohamed Nazif, Alex Hines, Imran Hussain, one of the new guys who we mentioned, uh, Sam Bolton, Irfan Patan, uh, Gareth Winstanley, the old stager, uh, Ryan Wells, uh, Scott Newton, captain and wicketkeeper, Harry Bates, Matt Easton and Aaron Ayrton. So all in all, a very, very balanced side. Uh, lots yeah. of all-round talent in there, and and I think as we discussed, it's it's a team that if we can keep the availability well, has the ability to to really do some damage in that division three. Absolutely, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Alex Hines back on the field and to see whether he can recreate his um, record-breaking season of 2015 uh, for the number of runs scored in the division. Uh, it certainly would be great to have him back opening the innings and, and finding the form of 2015. That would be great. Um, as you say, it looks a really balanced side. Um, lots of different options with both bat and ball. Um, and it's good to just see some some of the younger players, like you mentioned, Aaron Ayton coming through and, and Matt Easton, people who have been at the club as juniors. And it's great to see them flourishing in the first team now. And that That's absolutely what we're looking to do going forward. So it'll be a really interesting test first up for uh, this new makeup of the first team and how, how they all get on. I'm looking forward to it. I think from my point of view, something I've talked to Scott about is that, the, as you touched on there, the plethora of options, and particularly from a bowling perspective. I mean, just looking at that team there, you, you've got um, seam options with Aaron, uh, Matt Easton, uh, Ryan, uh, Irfan, even Sam Bolton there has been bowling really well in winter nets. And then you, to back that up, you've even got spin options with Harry uh, and Gareth. Um, so there really is, you know, a, a, some really good options in there. Um, so from that point of view, you know, it's, it's some tough decisions for, for Harry and Scott. and But good, deci good tough decisions in, a, in respect of it's always nice to have that flexibility and those options to choose from. Absolutely, particularly in the middle of a season, you'll be looking to uh, have some spin options and certainly more than one spin option in the middle of the season. So it's great to have those two options in your first choice 11 to begin with, plus lots of different seam options. And I think it's just a, a good thing as well, obviously, with the changes that the Pal Shield introduced quite a few years ago and, and uh, correctly, in my view, to, to bring in uh, bowling restrictions, so which means that you need to have these options uh, you you know you just simply can't rely on the same two or three bowlers. You have to have those options, and you and it does make it become more of a team game. So I'm really excited about the bowling options, as you say, that we have. And um, the batting looks very strong as well, and and uh, the 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 batting prowess goes quite a long way down the order, if not all the way down. So it's. Uh, on paper, obviously the game isn't always ever played on paper, apart from our Zap cricket. Um, but on paper, it looks a really strong team. And I hope when we get out there uh, at the weekend and going forward, that the availability remains as good as, as it is in week one. Absolutely. And, and just, you know, even when we're talking about the, the three teams and the fluidity and the backup that we can maybe have, just even looking at that team, you know, there's no eight Zaz there who, who's who been looking superb in winter nets. Uh, and whilst we know this is just a uh, an off the cuff selection in terms of uh, this first virtual match, I'm sure eight Zaz will come into uh, selection criteria as well. And as we were discussing, Abdullah's spin back up as well. So, yeah, lots of options and even a couple, even just for this uh let's say, fun selection, um, you know, that, that, you know, have missed out there in, in terms of selection from that point of view. So, so yeah, it, it's, it's looking good to potentially equally matched teams. 
um, for this first match. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how we how it goes out. Uh, as I say, we'll be doing that on on Saturday, and and we'll keep an eye on social media for more information on that. Uh, we'll try and get that put out. Uh, as for this video, we're going to be putting this out on uh, on YouTube. So if you uh, have watched this, please follow and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content that we're going to do coming up, previewing matches and, and letting you know what's going on around the club. Uh, I'd like to thank Dave for joining me tonight. Any uh, last comments from yourself, Dave? Uh, not really, but just at this current moment in time, we'd, I'd probably just like to thank our uh, ground staff, particularly 13 captain Michael Berry for keeping uh, the recreation ground in such fine condition um, at the current time and uh, obviously making it somewhere where people can go and take their daily exercise and, and just enjoy the outdoors as much as they can at the moment with the with the restrictions in place. So many thanks to, uh, to Mick for that. And yeah, I hope everybody stays safe and um, that we're able to get out onto the cricket field as soon as we can. Totally agree, Dave. Echo those com comments completely. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, if you'd like to leave any comments, where it's the first time we tried this, so uh, any feedback is good feedback. Um, be nice, though, please. Um, but anyway, from me and Dave, that's uh, that's it for now. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.